So I have a 2017 Bolt with the latest software, 14.1.0, which is a lie, because on this little key thing, USB key, I downloaded from the internet's 14.4.2. So to, what you do is once you've got it downloaded, you plug it in to one of these two USB ports, and up here, software update, new version. No supported data, but let's still update. Ooh, you must keep the vehicle in park during this update. Do not turn off the vehicle. Do not remove USB drive until update has been completed. Updating package. Remaining time, 12 and a half minutes. Sounds about right. Everyone else on the internet said it took between 12 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna sit here in the car for the next at least 12 minutes and watch a progress bar. Super fun. Also, apparently I need to dust my car because now that I'm looking at the car in the light of day, I need to dust my car. But I'm not going to do that because I might press a button and I don't want to press any buttons and do anything. I'm just going to sit here and drink my coffee and I'm going to update the software and root and rom the car. It's not what I'm doing. But wouldn't that be great though? One day, you know, get lineage on it oh, here, whatever. So yeah, for anyone else on the interwebs, wondering about this process. This looks like it's about it. I'm just gonna record the whole thing. I'm gonna hold my phone like a fool because I forgot my stupid GoPro password and resetting the GoPro Hero 3 is a very involved process. There's no menu to say reset password on the camera. There's no anything on the camera to do stuff to the camera. You gotta connect it to your computer. It's windy out today. Coffee. So I found this uh, download from a shady GM person, and by shady I mean Robin Hood, who downloaded the software update for a random bolt from a VIN he found on the internet, programmed a USB key, which is what the dealership would do, and then zipped those files and put them up on the internets for the whole world to enjoy. Well, I am part of the whole world and I'm going to enjoy these little USB trinkets. I very much hope that my USB key isn't corrupted or anything. It's a cheapy, it's like a one gig promotional thing that I found somewhere. Actually, I think I snagged it from work. Whatever. It looks like it's going. I'm assuming that the people who write control modules for GM, the software for GM have some sort of verification process so that it only updates if it's able to verify that it's the correct update and it doesn't just load some random binary file on there. It's my thinking anyway. GM isn't necessarily a software company though. One of the things that this update is supposed to do is supposed to enable future OTA updates so that you can just get the update yourself when you're connected to your house Wi-Fi or if you've got the uh, data package that uh, GM sells or that OnStar sells, I'm not sure who. You can just click a button in the car's menu and get the software update. Well, hopefully that works and we'll see when the next firmware gets released. I've got a pro tip for other Bolt owners out there. A little bit of hockey tape across this metal bar up here will prevent you from getting incredible sun glare on my commute into work. That's right, if you put it there, it'll prevent me from getting your sun glare. I don't know why they'd put that bar there, it's ridiculous. 
release notes for this firmware say something about fixing issues with the radio coming on uh, randomly, issues with the camera not turning off or the screen going blank or the screen disappearing and rebooting while you're driving. All of those issues I've had happen to me. Uh, the screen going blank one I've had once where I was at a Canadian Tire, I was in the parking lot, turned the car on to come home and the screen just didn't come on. The cluster behind the steering wheel did, but this screen didn't. Got home, was worried, so about half an hour later I went back out in the driveway to check the car, turned it on, everything was fine. So it was just a momentary glitch. I've also had the same with the camera. Interestingly enough, same Canadian tire parking lot, put the car in reverse, camera came on, and then put the car in drive, and camera didn't go off, and none of the buttons, like the home button down here, none of that worked to get it out. And one day on my way home from work after a hard day, unplugged the car, we got charging stations at work, it's great, and just as I was turning out of the driveway to the office uh, parking lot, the screen froze and turned off, and then by the time I was getting onto the on-ramp, it had come back on and done its full reboot animation and everything. So, Well, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to rest the phone on the steering wheel a bit. That progress bar is not moving at nearly the speed that the timer is counting. If this was supposed to be a 12 minute update, or 12 and a half minutes, we're at the almost six and a half minute mark, and that progress bar is at 25%, maybe 30? No, probably 25. So, either that progress bar is indicative of something else, or that timer is just a random number that they put in there saying, oh yeah, this should probably take about 12 minutes, given everything. I don't know. 32%. Oh, there's a was a percentage thing over there. So, yeah, still not going to be 12 minutes unless that progress bar moves asynchronously from the timer. I mean, which makes sense. Measuring progress of uh, an install routine is a little bit difficult. All you can do is check, you know, did it complete... If you've got 10 tasks, each completing each task would be 10%, but if one task takes 5 minutes and the next task takes 1 minute you're going to jump 10% in 5 minutes and then 10% in 1 minute. So that timer, oh, there's 40%. So it's probably jumping along that line. It probably doesn't have 10 things to do. It probably has 110 things to do or 1,010. Although there are only 5 files on this USB stick, there's one file that has 0 bytes in length. It's just a name being referenced, I guess. A version number or some sort of key or code to indicate to the car that it's a software update for a specific component. And then there are four files in a folder called update. And they're all large, 390, or one of them is 390 meg. The whole thing is about 500 megs. 50%. With four minutes remaining. Well, it feels like it has sped up a bit. I got this car back in April and I have put about 
13,000, well, 13,834 kilometers on it. Living in and around the Toronto area, we took this on a road trip to Montreal just to see if we could do it. Ended up stopping from, uh, from Oakville, where my boss lives. We went to Ajax? We made it to Ajax. There was a, an electrical supply company, I think, called Viridian. They had a level 3 charger. It took us an hour to top up from 90% charge, but that's okay. We made it all the way from there to Cornwall, and there was a flow charger. 17 bucks an hour. Bit pricey flow, whatever. Uh, in the parking lot of a St. Hubert's chicken. So we had lunch, and we were there for an hour and 15 minutes, just a relaxing lunch. And we got almost a whole charge, but that trip between Ajax and Cornwall was f almost 400 kilometers. And the, uh, according to the U.S., the EPA range is 380 kilometers or somewhere around there, 383. But we made it all the way into the heart of Montreal, and then as soon as you're in Quebec, there are charging stations littered everywhere. I mean, Quebec has so much hydropower. It's all green. It's just flowing water that they harness. God, it is really speeding up towards the end here. 76%. But then on the way back, I mean, we charged across the street from the hotel we were staying at. We could charge anywhere, but we didn't. We made it from Montreal to Kempteville to, uh... What was the name of that company? It's uh, Solacity. It's like... They had a whole bunch of solar panels on the roof, and they were selling solar panels and things like that. It was really cool, but that was a flow charger in their parking lot. And it was a parking lot for maybe 10 cars, and they had a level 3 charger there. So we spent about an hour there. From there, we made it all the way to Peterborough, and there was a free charger in a shopping mall plaza, a level 3. And we were only there for maybe 20 minutes or so. And then from there, we made it all the way back to my boss's house. I dropped him off, came back home. Easy peasy. So, the only difficulty with the road trip was that it took a lot more time. Normally a road trip from Toronto to Montreal is five hours, maybe six. It took us close to ten because we had to stick to exactly 100 kilometers an hour to get the range that we needed, the 400 kilometers between the two level threes that we could find. So, a bit longer of a trip, but we took the 400 series highways, nothing big. This car can do everything, I'm never going back to gas never going back to gas. I sold both of my gas cars. My wife bought a Bolt, or we bought a Bolt for my wife to drive as well. So never going back to gas. 30 seconds left. GM, please let my car work after this update is complete. So that time is actually pretty accurate for me. Some people said it felt a lot longer. Video is about 13 and a half minutes right now, and I had about an hour of talking before I started, an hour, a minute of talking before I started. 100%, here we go. Software updated successfully. The system will automatically turn off in a few moments. What do you know? I'm going to leave the USB key in there, just uh, because. One thing that I did notice when I was trying to make this video is that I plugged in the USB key, and then when I went to go hit the button to update the first time, the screen went away before I hit the button, so it only gives you a few seconds to actually plug it in and then press the button to start the process. wonder how many moments it's talking about. Hmm.
the system will automatically turn off in a few moments. Moments are an actual measurement of time, guys. They're like fractions of a millisecond, aren't they? Or it's the amount of time it takes the light to travel one millimeter or something. Oh, there it goes! Here we go, reboot, reboot, reboot. Ooh! That probably won't show up on the video, but there is some sort of sound that's coming out of the speakers that suddenly went quiet. It was like white noise or something. I also noticed that I, my car went from park to nothing, then back to park. So whatever this reboot process is, it's actually doing something. Ooh. My little odometer thing behind the... That. Oh, hey, we're back! Taking your eyes off the road too often while using the system could cause a crash, resulting in injury or death to you or others. Focus on your attention. Blah, 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 blah. Focus on the road. Gotcha. What would be great, though, GM, is if this thing didn't obscure the entire system's view while I'm driving, unless I look at it, taking my eyes off the road, to carefully click the OK button. And so... We're back, baby. Look at that. Okay, so let's go into the settings here. So I have the, uh, the USB stick still plugged in. I'm just gonna check software information, software update. You have the latest, 14.4.2. So that's the process, that's the end of the video. Uh, yeah.